Hello and welcome back to my channel, Craft Time by Casey. I am Casey and today this is the statement necklace that I will be making. I think I'm just going to call it Bling Fest. <laughs> I decided to just go big, put it all out there, and most of the components for this necklace came from GGC's treasure bag for the month of January 2023 and this is Midnight Blues and it has to be up there with one of my most favorite curated bead boxes that I have ever worked with. I absolutely love the, the beads that came in this month's treasure bag and if you're interested in the treasure bag I will have all the information you need to get signed up to be notified for when she releases her next treasure bag. So if you would like to see how this labor of love came about, then stay tuned. All right, so let's get right into it. I'm going to start with the tools that I will be using. I have two sets of chain nose pliers, one set of cutters, one set of round nose pliers, and one set of crimping pliers. And I do want to briefly mention my tool set. It is the Casual Comfort tool set. I know I mention my tool set all the time, but I just absolutely love this tool set. As the name suggests, it is incredibly comfortable to use. It is very high quality, very well made. And one of the biggest things for me that makes it so comfortable is that they are made for adult size hands. A lot of times in the store, you will see these smaller tools. And I know they definitely work for some people, but once I found these tools, I just can't imagine using anything else. So I highly recommend this tool set and I will have it linked down below along with everything else in the video that I use that did not come from the treasure bag. And even if you don't get this tool set, I just recommend that you invest in your tools. Now that I have found these and I've used these for a while, it is clear to me how much of a difference investing in a good set of tools can make. I will also be using 49 strand bead along wire in the color bright which is this silver color and i usually get the 100 feet just because i go through it so quickly i will also link below the opening video that i did for ggc's treasure bag for midnight blue and in that video i have a detailed description of every single bead that i will be using in this video also some of these gunmetal components as well. And the things that I'm using from my own stash would be all of the findings, the lobster class, the pins, and I'm also using these three millimeter spacer beads and these four leaf bead caps. I have an image in my head and I know at this point in the video, you've already seen the intro, which has the necklace completed. In my mental image of this necklace it's going to be a big bold statement piece with several focus areas like these pendants i'm going to have you know large beautiful strands i'm just excited to get started so i have already cut a piece of wire and i'm gonna say it's probably about 14 inches so here is how i start each strand i'm gonna put on a crimp tube jump ring and a guardian wire. I'm gonna put it through one side and wrap it around and put it through the other. And then you wanna make sure your jump ring is up in that wire guardian and I'm gonna pinch it closed with my fingers. And I wanna make sure both ends of that wire are going through that crimp tube. Now that tail is a little bit too long for me so I'm gonna pull on that longer side. And now I know these pieces are small, but I want to separate that wire, as you can see, so that it is not crossed under that crimp tube. And then I'm gonna pull on the longer piece so that it's nice and snug. And now I'm gonna go in with my crimping pliers into that second divot and give it a good smash. And you should get that taco shape. I'm gonna turn it on its side. I'm gonna go into that first divot, give it another good smash. And that gets it pretty good. 
but I always like to go in with that flat part at the end of the crimping pliers and give it that final smash and that gets it really snug. So now I'm gonna hold it by that jump ring. I'm gonna take the crimp cover and put it on top of that smashed crimp tube. Then flip it up and I'm gonna go in with my chain nose pliers, give it a gentle smash. And now I'm gonna go front to back and give it some more gentle smashes to get it shaped into that round shape. And that is how we start each strand. And that crimp cover gives the illusion of the first bead. I'm gonna put on one of the four millimeter rounds with that black splatter paint. Oh, I just absolutely love those beads. And then a three millimeter spacer. I'm gonna pull it down and tuck in that tail, just like that. Then I'm gonna put a bead cap facing up, crackle bead, bead cap facing down. Including that three millimeter spacer, we're going to do this three more times. All right, there we go. And now we're going to do the center part. So we have one of the large barrel beads with that beautiful color pattern on it. And then the three millimeter spacer, four millimeter, and then three millimeter spacer just like that. And we're going to do this three more times. All right, so here are the beads for the center part. And now we're going to do this exact same thing right here on this side. All right, so here is the full strand. And this strand is a little over nine inches, about 24 centimeters. So here is how we close it off. Put on a crimp tube jump ring and a guardian wire. We're gonna put it through one side, wrap it around and put it through the other. You wanna make sure your jump ring is in the guardian wire. I'm gonna pinch it closed with my fingers and you wanna make sure both ends of the wire go through that crimp tube. And now I'm gonna put that tail through the first couple of beads and then pull it tight. And here's where you wanna have the balance because you wanna make sure your strand is flexible so you wanna move it around, but you definitely wanna make sure this wire is pulled snug, just not too snug. So I'm gonna hold it just like this. I'm gonna go in with my crimping pliers into that second divot and give it a good smash. Get that taco shape, turn it on its side, go into that first divot, give it another smash and that gets it pretty good, but I'm gonna go in with that flat part at the end. Give it the final smash, and that gets it nice and snug. Now I'm gonna go in with the crimp cover and put it right over the smash crimp tube. Then flip it up, go in with the chain nose pliers, give it a gentle smash, and then go back to front on that crimp cover to give it that round shape, just like that. Now I'm gonna take that tail and I'm gonna go in as close as I can with my cutters and then I'm gonna go in with my nail and just kind of push that into the next bead, just like that. So here is the strand, completely began and ended. The way it's gonna work is these chandelier components are gonna be on either side, and this is going to be the outside strand, just like this. So I have all of the other strands completed, and they are put together the exact same way, it's just a matter of the order of the beads. So here is the center strand, and again, I will have that video link below that gives a detailed description of all of these beautiful beads. But as you can see, it is began the same way, ended the same way. It's just the order of the beads. So this is that center strand. And then here is the smallest strand. And these also came in the treasure bag. I love these black beads with that shiny round circle in there. Just absolutely beautiful. And again, began and ended the same way, just the order of the beads. And then the two middle strands 
are all 60 seed beads. Again, same strategy, same method, just nothing but that same size seed bead. So these go right here. So here is the order. These beads are absolutely beautiful together. So to save you some of the heartache that I went through <laughs> to get these strands the exact right length, because let me tell you, I had to remake these some of these strands a few times because it was difficult to come up with the correct length because these chandeliers come down to a point and then go back out. So the length on these chandeliers was very difficult to factor in to the length of each one of these strands. So I already went through the length of this long strand. So this next one, all the components and everything on it, the wire guardians and everything, the length of this strand is just over eight inches. So this next strand is right at seven. And here is where that it's an odd jump from the length of some of these because my normal strategy is to have about an inch of length in between each strand to make it fall properly. But the way <laughs> this chandelier is, it, it threw off my typical plan, <laughs> my typical strategy. So yes, it jumps from just over seven and a half down to seven. That's the next one. And then this strand, just over six and a half. And if you look at it down here, these two are just about the exact same length. And then this final strand, the smallest one, is just over six inches. So once again, my typical strategy for making a multi-strand necklace was kind of thrown out the window with this one because of the style of chandelier. So a lot of pre-work went into this of correcting a lot of the mistakes. So hopefully this will save you some time if you, if you are making this particular necklace. So now let's connect them to the chandelier. So here we go. I'm going to use the jump ring that I already have on here and open it, connect it to that outside. These chandeliers are only one-sided, so you want to make sure you have it on the outside facing the correct way. And then you go in and close that jump ring. So just like that, and now we're going to connect all of the other ones in this order across this chandelier on this side. All right, there you go. I'll show you why the length of these strands threw me off. Just connected to one side. If you look at this, it doesn't look like it would be right because these three are super close and then you have these two strands that are just kind of out there and it doesn't look like, it messes with my head because it doesn't look like they should fall the right way <laughs> in a multi-strand necklace. But again, because of the shape of this chandelier, it falls the right way. So don't let that, you know, mess with your head like it does with mine. Um, it will fall the right way. So now we have it connected on one side. Let's connect it on the other. First thing before you connect, you want to kind of let them hang a little bit and make sure none of the strands are twisted and that they're falling very loosely on those jump rings. So I'm gonna take that four millimeter jump ring on the other end of that longest strand, open it, and then on the other chandelier, on the outside, I'm going to connect it. Close that jump ring. All right, so just like that, we're gonna connect all of them on this side. All right, so we now have both sides connected, and you can see they fall correctly <laughs> and i just absolutely think this is beautiful figuring this out was a a total labor of love uh and i will say 
it was worth it. I think these strands look absolutely beautiful together. But yes, it was a little frustrating. <laughs> All right, so now we're gonna create the components with the chain and work with the major charms that come off the bottom. So I'm going to set this aside while we create everything else. So first I'm gonna take an eye pin. This is the very simple pattern. And I wanna make sure the loop in the eye pin and the loop at the top that I'm gonna create are facing the same way. So I'm gonna place that right there on my finger. I'm gonna take my round nose pliers and go just above that top bead. I wanna make sure if it gets twisted a little bit, that's okay. Make sure you fix that before you bend it because you wanna make sure the loop at the bottom and the top are facing the same way. So I have that lined up and then I'm gonna bend it, bend it back with my fingers, go in with my cutters, then I'm gonna go in with my round nose pliers at the top and close that loop. And I'm gonna tuck that top right into that top bead. Make it as snug as I can. So there we go. We need to create one more of these. All right, there we go. And now I have a flat head pin. So there is the order. And this one has one of these beautiful twist beads. Once again, I'll have that video link below explaining each bead in detail. So to create that loop, I'm gonna go in with my round nose pliers just above the top, bend it, bend it back with my fingers, and then go in with my cutters, and then go back in with my round nose pliers and close that loop. So here's this component and we need one more. All right, there we go. So now we're gonna bring everything back out and now we're gonna put everything together. So I'm gonna take my six millimeter jump ring, open it, connect it to the top of the chandelier, just like that. And now I'm gonna take one of the components that we made with the eye pin that had the barrel and I want the barrel side down. We're gonna connect it to the bottom loop, just like that and close that jump ring. We're gonna do the same thing on the other side. And now we're gonna connect the chain and I'm using the chain that came in the box. So if you're wondering, this length of the necklace by itself, if we spread it out, which the length, you always go by the shortest strand and these components, so far it's right at 12 inches long. So. The length I'm going for is 18. So I have two lengths of chain that are right at three inches long. And I'm going to open my jump ring, connect it to the top, connect it to the last link in the chain and close the jump ring. And I'm gonna take a four millimeter jump ring, open it, connect it to the opposite last link and then add the lobster clasp, just like that. So now I'm gonna add the chain to this side, but instead of a lobster clasp, I'm just gonna end with a six millimeter jump ring. So there we go, and now I'm gonna connect this. <laughs> All right, so now I'm going to add the large pendants. And I know this necklace seems like it's a big statement piece as it is, but I, I'm going to add even more. I have several videos on my channel of simple jewelry. Sometimes you don't want to wear that much jewelry. Sometimes you want your jewelry to be smaller pieces, kind of simplified, but sometimes it's about the big and bold. So I'm going to connect this to the center here of the longest strand and I'm going to connect our pendant and then close that jump ring. And these jump rings that I'm using to add the pendants off the bottom are heavy duty 10 millimeter jump rings. I'm gonna take the next one, open it, add one of the smaller pendants we made. And I'm gonna add this exact same thing to the other side. All right, now there it is. So I'm going to put this on my display so that we can see it better. All right, so here it is. And I am very happy with how it came out. I definitely think that this is a bold, big, 
statement necklace. I absolutely love it. I think the pendants put on there at the end just add a little bit more to a necklace that already was a statement necklace. And I love, love, love these chandelier components. And like I said, while I was making it, I have several videos on my channel for more simple jewelry, but I think every now and then you just need to go big, big statement pieces. And it is something that I enjoy. And this one was definitely that labor of love that I talked about. I had to remake several of the strands. I enjoyed struggling through this necklace. Now I've made necklaces before that the struggle was just frustrating and nothing else. This one I absolutely loved. These beads are just beautiful, just absolutely beautiful. And I loved the challenge of making sure that the different strands on this necklace hung just the right way. And the challenge being the shape of that chandelier component. And I just, I enjoyed it. I love the challenge. I love the way that it came out. And I think this necklace is absolutely beautiful. And a huge part of that is the beads. So if you are interested in being notified for GGC's treasure bag, I will have all the information in the description box below. Now she does not have a monthly subscription, but she does have a notification list. So that's the information I will have. So every time she releases a new treasure bag, you will be notified. So you can definitely be one of the first to jump on it and get it because most of her treasure bags are like this one and they sell out in just record time. They sell out within a day or two and you definitely want to be notified so you can get it as soon as it comes out and you don't miss it. So if you like this video and you want to see other videos like this, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below and give me a like. Leave a comment. I absolutely love reading my comments. You guys are so, so kind. And I definitely look forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye.